So Paul writes to the Thessalonians. He said there's going to be a great falling away. This work in the word of the Greek is apostasia. In the English, we get the word apostasy from this. And the word apostasia in the Greek means a turning from a point of view once held. It literally means a leaving from a previous standing. In other words, I used to stand here, but now I'm apostate. I stand over here. Hmm. I once stood here, but I no longer stand. Come on, somebody. But now I've moved my position from where I once was. It's similar to the word in Greek, metanoia, only it's in the negative sense. In other words, it's turning not wrong from right, but right from wrong. It's turning not from good to bad, but from bad to good. In other words, there's a day coming, huh, as I say, Isaiah wrote, when people will call good evil and evil good. That put darkness for light, Isaiah writes, and light for darkness, to put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isaiah goes on to write, woe to them, woe to them that are murdering children and calling a woman's choice. Woe to them, woe to them that call homosexuality an alternative, alternative lifestyle. Listen, church, woe to them. That's what the prophet is writing. But church, please remember that when you see these things happening, don't be discouraged because things aren't falling apart, but rather they're falling into place. Hear me when I tell you somebody, Jesus is on his way. Come on and give him a praise in the house. Let me give you some examples of apostasy in the 21st century church. Here we go, watch. I once stood on the doctrine that Jesus is the way and there's no other name under heaven, but now I believe that there are many ways to heaven. Somebody say apostate. Let me give you another example. When we're more interested in elevating people and creating new titles and a religious hierarchy, but there's no more love or desire to reach the destitute, there's no desire to evangelize, there's no desire to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, there's no desire or love to welcome in the stranger. Somebody say apostate. When you used to believe the whole Bible from cover to cover, but now you rip out certain pages because they're not politically correct, my God. When preachers refuse to take a stand for holiness, when preachers refuse to st take a stand for righteousness and will not preach against homosexuality, they won't preach against abortion, they won't preach against adultery and shacking up because their tithing uh, might fall away. Listen, they just say, oh, well, it's the way of the world nowadays. Listen, church, apostasy. When sin... And judgment is never mentioned from the pulpits any longer. There's no mention of consequences for action. There's no mention of Calvary's cross. There's no preaching about the blood of Jesus. It's nowhere to be found in any messages. Somebody shout apostate. Listen, without the blood of Jesus Christ, we are all doomed to hell. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing. All oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other fount. I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody thank God for his blood this morning. We still preach the blood of Jesus cleanses. My, my. So in the last days, Paul wrote to Timothy, there are going to be perilous times, great deception, political deception, cultural deception, 
And because the church has become so biblically illiterate, so lethargic, so lazy about the Word of God, there's great spiritual deception. Paul continues to write to the Thessalonians. He says, because people do not love the truth, God himself will send a strong delusion. Hmm. Why is God going to send a strong delusion? Because people did not love the truth. So hear me today, somebody. If you don't want to be deceived, you better love the truth. You better obey the truth. You better seek the truth. Jesus also said in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, he said, many false prophets would arise in the last days. This is all a part of the great harlot that we're speaking about this morning. This is a timeline marker. And let me tell somebody, we are here today. We're living in a day when there are now way more false prophets than true prophets in the church. Oh, God. I'm not talking out in the street. We know those are false prophets. When you have to dial 1-800, well, no, it's one 900 because they want your money. 1-900, you know, give me a, 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 a horoscope reading, right? We know those are false prophets. I'm talking behind pulpits in quote-unquote Christian churches. There's more false churches today than true churches of Jesus Christ. Listen, saints of God. The older I get, the older I get, the more I really listen to what people say. I've learned to listen through the motivational story type preaching. Hmm. I've learned to listen through all the hooping and the hollering. Come on, somebody. I'm not saying those styles aren't good. It's just, what are you saying to me? What's the word? I need some meat on my bone, somebody. I need a word that's going to encourage me. I need a word that's going to edify me. I need a word that's going to build me up inside. Because I don't know about you, but I'm in a battle every day of my life. My Bible tells me we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Honey, if you want to be a warrior, you can't be eating cotton candy every day. To every nation, to every generation, to all creation, to proclaim the gospel. Proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ.